Hello, everyone. My name is Lynn Huynh. I'm the founder and host of Fan to Fame. We're here today with former Michigan State superstar, former NBA first-round draft pick, and a Grammy-nominated music producer. Please help me welcome Maurice Ager. How you doing, Mo? Yo, what's happening, man? What's the word? It's all good. Well, man, appreciate it. You're someone that's involved with a lot of different things. Uh, you start off playing basketball. You're now in a music career. You have a school where you train up kids on basketball. So, Definitely want to talk to you about a lot of different things, so I appreciate your time. Oh, man. It's all love, bro. It's all good. Appreciate it. Hey, being from Detroit, when I think about Detroit, I think about Motown, and I'm sure we're going to talk about music later, but what got you into basketball? And if I had to guess, I'd probably say Detroit Piston, the Bad Boy era, had to play a role Definitely. in it. Yeah, yeah. That, I think the Bad Boy era was huge. Um, yeah, I was maybe, maybe five, six years old when that happened, but um, it definitely seems like yesterday. You know what I'm saying? You know, just watching Isaiah Thomas and, you know, Isaiah Thomas was definitely my favorite player, you know what I mean, during that time with the Pistons. You know, Joe Dumars and, you know what I mean, those other guys. So I think that, uh, the, you know, the basketball was was growing heavy. And plus, you know, that's something that we just did around the neighborhood, you know, just as fun anyway. So from, you know, just watching the NBA at a young age, we figured like, oh, okay, because there's actually opportunities for us to actually play on, on that level. Right. So we just, I mean, you know, for me personally, man, I set that as a goal as a young child, like, yo, that's, you know, that's what I want to play at, you know what I'm saying? And then I started watching more and more college games. I'm like, okay, I got to go to college first. You know, this is around the time where college was, right. was necessary uh, um, in order to, like, you know, play, play in pro. So it was definitely um, a unique experience growing up in Detroit, you know, considering that, you know, that's uh, – Detroit is, is – is um, I think it's, it's a historically a well-rounded well place, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, when you think about, you know, music, entertainment, you know what I mean, just the – um you know, the, the, the factory industry, you know, the car industries, you know, sports has been pretty big, you know, even with the Red Wings, you know what I mean? They're high school, I mean, it's called hockey town. So, you know, we've already always had like, you know, good sports and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I definitely think that, you know, basketball was like probably the biggest inspiration for me, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it was easier to play, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For me. <laughs> it, no, I got, I it all worked out, man. It all worked out. I'm really excited yeah. to talk about more of your basketball journey. Um, but like, from my understanding, you actually committed to Missouri. However, your yeah. mom had a big influence on you actually staying in the state yeah. from going to Michigan State. What was the initial driver for Missouri? Um, the initial drive? Yeah, for, for you wanting to go there. Uh, you know, I, I really like Quinn Snyder, Snyder bro. Uh, I think he was a, a real good player coach. Um, you know, he was cool. You know, just a goose, real good slick dude. You know what I mean? I, I really liked, you know what I mean, the way he carried himself. Um, I think he was pretty transparent about, you know, how he was willing to use me as a freshman. And uh, that was pretty appealing to me, you know what I mean? I wanted to go and play right away, you know, I wanted to start. And um, I would have had those opportunities, I feel, but, um, you know, it, it obviously didn't work out. You know, I'm glad it, you know, I ended up taking a, you know, a second look at that decision, you know what I mean? By committing to Michigan State and signing with Michigan State, you know, because, um, you know, thereafter, you know, that's when Missouri actually got into a lot of trouble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With, you know, the NCAA, so. Um, I guess I dodged a bullet. You know, I was being investigated by the NCAA for two years, you know, my freshman and sophomore year. So that made things a bit difficult to concentrate and focus, mm -hmm. you know, considering that um, I could have possibly lost my eligibility, you know, during that right. during that time. So it was like, that, you know, so, you know, I was able to, you know, still maneuver that, you know what I mean? So I'm I'm, actually, I'm always grateful for, you know, that. But yeah, yeah, Missouri was definitely one, one of those, you know, good schools, man. I liked it there. Yeah, I think everything works out for a reason, right? All plays out. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Why well, Michigan State, you led the Spartans to the Final Four. You participated in an annual dunk contest, led the Big yeah. Ten and scoring your senior year. Can you talk more yeah. about your experience at Michigan State? And when we think of Coach Izzo, he's a Hall of Fame coach. What is it that makes yeah. him who he is? Uh, you know, I think at the time, you know, Izzo really cared. You know, and I feel like he, he really wanted to keep the, um, the, the pedigree of the, the – the, the school and, and not only just the basketball program, but, you know, just, you know, just watching us graduate and being able to, you know, uh, accomplish things on, on campus. You know, I think that meant a lot to him. You know I mean? Obviously basketball was the most important thing, but for us, he, he wanted, he wanted us to be well-rounded, right. you know what I mean? And, and, and I respected that, you know what I'm saying? He, he didn't let us skip class, you know, and even if he did skip class, you know, he was, he was really pissed about it. You know what I'm saying? Cause right. you know, he wanted to, keep, you know, he wanted to keep the graduation, obviously the graduation percentages for his right. team, high obviously so there's some some um some ambition in that department but I think my experience was great just because you know I met a lot of good people and I had a lot of fun mm -hmm. you know, so I had fun you know just with regular students man I think that was a outside of the you know basketball was great you know what I'm saying don't get me wrong but 
I definitely would say that the greatest experience I had was definitely just hanging out, you know, with the, with the regular kids in school, right. you know what I'm saying? You know, and I really enjoyed that. So it was like, whenever we had free time, man, I really, you know, I, I, I kind of just would kind of go off on my own and, and hang out with, just to feel like a college student, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. You know what I mean? Not just experience. a student athlete. College experience. Yeah. Yeah, it was lit, you know what I'm saying? And I did, and I did that. I'm happy I did too. It's just like, I don't have to feel like I missed out on nothing, you know what right. I'm saying? Hey, you were there for four years, man. I'm sure there's a lot of good stories, a lot of good memories from there. Did you get? Did you have like a lot of like family member friends that uh, regularly went to games, or did you have any friends from like your high school that went there as well? Yeah, definitely. You know, my mom, sister, uh, cousins, and stuff like that. You know, they consistently came up for every game, almost every weekend. So, and a weekday. So, you know, I don't think they ever missed. <laughs> it. Yeah, they didn't miss too many games. Right. So I always had support from back home. You know what I mean? From my immediate family. You know. Oh, that's good stuff. I'm sure mom and the rest of the family's happy having you close by and whatnot. So that's always nice. I know for me too, I went to school about three hours from home, but it was nice every once in a while. If you want to just get in the car, get some homemade food, just get back. Yeah. So that was always nice. <laughs> yeah, that was solid. You know, I went home every now and then, you know, yeah. I was actually cool living on my own. So it was like, yeah, I was good. It was, I was cool to get out the house and, you know what I mean? Have my own, you got your own freedom, somewhat man. have my own rule. Yeah. Yeah. I was a freedom dude. You know, so I like my freedom. So I hear you. Still do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got you. 100%. Good. After Michigan State, so you spent four years there, got drafted by Dallas Mavericks in the first yeah. round. Did you have an idea that you're heading to Dallas or how that all come about? Um, No, I had no clue. But I do remember, you know, the night before the draft, when I was in New York, you know, um, just hanging out with my high school coach. And uh, we were watching the mock drafts. And uh, they definitely had me going 28 to the Mavericks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that happened. I didn't think that was going to happen. You know, me personally, you know, I worked out for so many teams. I broke the record for NBA workouts, pre-workouts. Oh, wow. Okay. Even so much today, they changed the rules the next year. <laughs> you know what I'm and like, it was ridiculous how many workouts I was doing. And yeah. quite frankly, I don't think it helped me. But it, it only thing it helped me is what, where I, you know, um, more today, understanding that, you know, less is more. You know what I'm saying? Less is more. Um uh, you know, working smarter, not harder. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I just feel like, you know, um, me personally, I, I was anxious, not anxious, but I was, you know, I had a lot of ambitions. I, you know, team wanted to see me. I was like, all right, cool. But you know, if I can go back and, you know, do it again, I would be like, okay, well, these, I played on TV just as much as any college player in, in four years. So it's like, <laughs> you had plenty of opportunity to see, like, you know, what type of player I was. So, um, yeah, I think I overdid it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, towards maybe the, and, you know, you, you wear out, you know what I mean? Right. You got to fly to Philadelphia and then do a workout there and then have a Philadelphia, uh, a, a workout in Phoenix <laughs> the next day. I mean, of course, you know, I, I ain't going to say I was terrible in workouts, but <clears throat> the pr productivity is obviously going to drop. Right, absolutely. You know what I'm For anybody, I don't care who you are. So it's like, um, you know, and the word get around fast. Like, oh, yeah, he wasn't, he was good in his workout, but he wasn't dynamic. You know what I'm saying? It was like, right. you know, for seniors, it was already tough, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the longer you stay, the more they kind of like critique you. Exactly. The more they have, they, they have more to critique you. Right. They have more to critique you. That's why it's, it's better for a kid if he's having a, a good one or two years, get out of there. You know what I'm saying? That's my opinion, you know what I'm saying? Because it's right. like the longer you stay, the more they can actually see uh, your deficiencies. And they're, you know, and they, they're they not as graceful as they are with, with youthful, youthful talent, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Now, you hit on something I was actually going to probably just touch on later, but um, while we're at it, so if you were a current, like, high school player at this time, um, looking to decide where you're going to go to next for your college career, um, would you advise, like, an athlete to go, if they knew they could go to like, a major program like Michigan State, but their playing time might not be their first couple of years, whereas they can go to, like, a mid-major and get all the playing time right up front, what would you advise that student, athlete? Uh, it all depends on the player. Yeah. I think if you're a player that was maybe, you know, in the top 50 coming out or top, you know, top 100, you know what I mean, the, the latter part of the top 100, it probably would be better if you do it on mid-major. But if you're a player that was kind of like like myself, like I was like top five shooting guard in the country. Right. So it's like. You knew you're going to get your PT in right off the bat. No? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I still played 20 minutes my first year. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. considering I was, you know, injured the first month. You know what I'm saying? Like the first two months and, and um, you know, it was plus two, I'm sorry, first three months almost with stress fractures and and other little things I was I was going through. So um 
Yeah, I had a lot of shining moments my freshman year. I, I think me personally, I, I don't, I wouldn't have wanted to go to a mid range, mid major. That was me. Hmm. I feel like more guys get more chances now from mid majors though. Right. Well, you know I, I bring that up now because I feel like the you know basketball changes all the time, and you traveling around the world, you definitely notice it as you go to different countries yeah. how much basketball is spread. But I think maybe when you played. You know, it was no one really thought about going to mid major. That was the literally alternative plan. Whereas nowadays, yeah. like, a lot of more prospects having that desire to, you know, what I want to play up front, and I still have a, as good of a chance making to the pros if I go to mid major. So, definitely yeah. your thoughts on that because this is a big reason why I put this together. Like you said, there's a lot of things at that moment. You had so much drive and desire where you know if someone wanted to work out for you, you're just going to do it. Whereas now yeah. things, regulation has changed, but things like what you're sharing now can definitely help other folks that's in that position right now, wondering, should I, or what, what should I do? Yeah, yeah, that was kind of out of the question at that time. Like, <laughs> I think the lowest, I think the lowest, lowest school I probably would've went to at that time was probably like a Marquette. Yeah. I would've did a Marquette. I got but, you. Um, but yeah, I'm stuck, man. I had to go somewhere big, man. I mean, that was my dream to go to a big school. You know what yeah. I mean? So. Not here on that 100%. Why are you with Dallas? You play with Jason Kidd, Dirk Nowitzki. I mean, those are two legendaries right there. Um, any mm. good stories of the, playing with them and also being an entrepreneur yourself? What are some things you picked up from Mark Cuban? Yeah, honestly, uh, yeah. Well, I was actually traded for, for Jason Kidd, so I didn't get a chance to play with, with Kidd, but That's I played right. with Dirk. Yeah, yeah, it was great playing with Dirk and those guys, Jake Terry and um, Josh Howard, and you know, and then a few other guys, Stackhouse. Um, you know, those guys were cool man they're good people for life man and um as far as cube cube was just one of those people where I, you know as a rookie i sat on the plane next to him you know every game you know we had our um on away games you know we had uh, a signed seat so that's who i sat by you know what i'm saying so I, that's you know, a good I seat right there <laughs> yeah i just picked brand and stuff and i think he respected me for that i think he, he always saw something else in me besides the, you know just the basketball you know what I'm saying? just because of the questions i was asking during those moments right yeah I could so see that. Like, you know, That's why you got into the things you did, man. I mean, you've got involved with. And another thing I want to hit on right now is after basketball, you played several years in the league. You played overseas a bit. Uh, then you created the Mo Agger Hoop School, which is developed yeah. to work with upcoming basketball players around the world, young athletes. Yeah. Can you talk more about that program and doing all the travel you did, working with all these different kids from different areas? What's the perspective you get when when you think of how basketball has grown? Yeah, man, it's dope because it's like, I feel like, you know, just how I designed a program, it, it was always meant to be a mobile type program to where it's like, I'm not stuck in one place mm -hmm. or, um, you know, it, it's allowed me to go to different countries and, and, and learn, you know, not only how, you know, basketball can work for them, just for me to just learn other cultures, you know what I'm saying? So that has found me a lot as well. And, um, you know, just being here in Vietnam and just watching how basketball is growing, you know, it's growing so fast. And uh, me being here during this time is very important. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, I believe everything happens for a uh, divine purpose. So it's like for me to be here, you know, with my background and stuff like that, and me being willing to help and, you know, in the, in the growth of something that's important. You know what I mean? Sports is, right. is, is huge for, for people around the world. And I feel like, um, you know, the Asian culture, you know, they put so much on academics and stuff like that. Right. And that um, they're starting to really see how important it is or how accepted and how, um, uh, successful you can be by, you know, just being involved in, in basketball, you know what I'm saying? You know, you don't have to make it to the highest level, but Absolutely. some of the values and the discipline and the confidence you gain playing a sport, you know what I mean? That's, that can help you in all aspects of life, you know what I'm saying? And I think they're really starting to get that now. So what yeah. brought you to specifically Vietnam and uh, have you picked up the language at all? Uh, a little bit, man. Um, <laughs> little words here and there. And whatnot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm picking up on little stuff. I need to take it more serious, though, to be honest. But it's just like everybody I'm around just speak English, man. It's like yeah. a lot of people speak English, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I, I haven't struggled at all to get, you know. Yeah. So it's like, but I still think it's I should at least know a little, you know, a lot more than I do. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Vietnam is a great place. Like I said, man, it's, it's up and growing, coming, it's growing. Um, you know, I'm here with a purpose to, you know, um, you know, add value. Where I can add value, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's through sports, whether it's through, you know, music or mentorship, any way I can add value to the people here and um and do that, you know what I mean? That's that's kind of like how I feel about it because it's like it's such a beautiful place, man. It's like, yeah, it's a dope place, man. It's one of the best. It's, it's easily probably my favorite place I've lived, you know what I'm saying? Outside of like, you know what I mean? Some of the glory years in America, you know what I'm saying? Right. But uh, as far as my adulthood, man, I feel like this is, definitely where I'm supposed to be. 
and I have no doubts about that. So, so I want to continue to build here long term and and grow with the mm-hmm. grow with the country. You know what I'm saying? Look right. back five years from now and and see what you know I was able to bring to the table along with what being honest brought for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's not like you know you lot of you have a lot of foreigners who will come here. You know what I mean? And and kind of not really take they would take it for granted on right. how um how uh you know I think Vietnam is. I would consider a free place, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of freedom here. And some people come here, you know, just, you know, just not really serious about doing anything outside of like maybe, you know, partying and drinking right. and all of that stuff. Right. You can do that, it's cool, but at least have some type of purpose on why you're here in a foreign land. Like right. what value are you bringing to this, to this country? Right. And I think that they're really starting to look at that and they're cracking down on some of these things. And um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I view things. So it's like, I think that, I feel like I will always be good here just because I do keep that in mind. And it's, you know, I just keep my heart pure knowing that like I'm not here just because of it's inexpensive or any, or any other, you know, um, uh, non-prosperous reasons to be here. Like I'm here to win, you know what I'm saying? But at, at the end of the day, I know that I have something that I can offer as well. So. Right. Hey man, me being Vietnamese, man, I can appreciate that because I kind of think yeah. that a lot of times, uh, a lot of people from all over the world, they come to Asia or just wherever, um, they just kind of go yeah. there to party and have a good time. You can do that, and whatnot, but I think there's a lot of yeah. things that you know you got to respect where you're at. Um, you got to. Not, that's you how you get in trouble. <laughs> you get in a lot of trouble like that, and it's like, like you just said, like you um, you know, people come here and they disrespect the the, the locals. It's like, and you think that that's, nah, that's that's not gonna cut it. You know what I'm saying? Especially what we have in this new world. You know what I'm saying? You're not about to come here and just like disrespect the. The, the locals here who actually have pride in what they're doing and right and uh, the women and stuff like that so it's like right yeah i try to be cautious to that you know what i mean you know not to say i don't get frustrated at times you yeah. know because like you said earlier there is a language barrier at times so it's like you might get a bit frustrated but it's like you know what you signed up for though <laughs> huh? i said you know what you signed up for though if you go into a third world country you know yeah. different language but you got that in you man you uh you got that mindset whatever you're gonna have aspiration for you to tackle it. So you don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're lucky to have good, you there. Man. You're lucky to have you there, man. Man, I'm lucky to be here, man. Yeah. I'm lucky to be here, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. I'm lucky to be here. You know, I found my wife out here. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? I think that's like one of the, the most, one of the greatest gifts I've, I've gotten. You know what I'm saying? Awesome, to, to come out all the way from America and find her. You know what I'm saying? So from yeah. Detroit to Vietnam, man, who would have thought, right? <laughs> who would have thought, bro? Are you, do you plan on being there long term? Like you touched on a little bit. Do you see this as home moving forward, or do you see this as a place where you kind of come back every now and then? But you'll be no, no, no. This is home. This is definitely home for me. Like, okay. I've already made my mind of it. It's home. You know, I would go perhaps visit other places. You know what I mean? Whenever that don't even seem like that's a part of the, the program right now. Just getting on planes right now. It's just too much going on. So yeah, nah, I'm I'm good here, man. That's you know awesome, I mean? man. That's awesome. It's it's a little difficult at times, you know, because I'm so used to traveling and being able to just go wherever. You know, but uh, it's not where we at right now in life. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just pay attention to that and build here. Yeah, not hear you on that, man. What's your va- a favorite Vietnamese dish outside of pho? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's that is up there. But um, my favorite uh, that's a good one. I don't really have a favorite, bro. To be honest, I mean, I be I don't have a favorite. I really okay. don't. I enjoy I'm it all. Rec- I'm just gonna recommend if you like soup and something a little a little kick to it, try bumbo way. Spicy beef noodle soup. You probably had it before. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that'd be, yeah. that's uh. Honestly, my, like my, my, wife, my wife has been so it's like we eat pho all the time <laughs> and soups and ramen, every type of noodle you can think. I've been eating noodles my whole life from Detroit, man. We ate it because we thought we was, that's what we ate. Like, you know I was the same we way, was, bro. <laughs> yeah, we got top running, so it's like when I moved out here, I'm like, oh shit, it's nothing different. So it's like, yeah, it's just a little bit more cuisine than we used to make. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know, they put vegetables and shit in there where we just ate ours with the seasoning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some people used to chop up sausages and cheese, but it's like, nah, we just <laughs> out here, you know, they put the uh, the onions and, you know what I'm yeah. saying? The, the they traditional make it a little more sophisticated. Asian than that. Leaves, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, cool. I feel like I'm eating healthy. <laughs> you know? That's cool, man. Hey, well, on top of you and your basketball program, um, you also got into the music industry. You're a music yeah. producer. Um, awesome accolades, man. You're nominated for a Grammy. Worked with some major artists, voiced 5'9", E-40, yeah. Lazy Bone from yeah. Bone Thugs, Be Real from Cypress Hill, just to name a few, man. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, can you talk it's about funny, the journey? Go ahead. Yeah, actually, I'm actually getting ready to release um, the record with Royce with another VR artist here by the name of Wordy. That's awesome. And, um, no, 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 no. I'm really saying that with, I'm going to use E-40. I got a reverse for E-40 for Wordy. He's a pretty big artist out here. And um, okay. another artist named Blacker. I'm going to do that one with, um, with Royce. Okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, yeah, that's another thing I'm doing as well. You know what I mean? Uh, up until maybe the past three weeks, I was actually doing I had my music production classes at the studio. So I was teaching, teaching the kids how to make beats, you know what I'm saying, how to produce. So it's like, once again, I'm I'm getting in where I fit in. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to do nothing that I can't. Or, you know, not to say that I'm right. uh, not going to do something outside of my comfort zone. <laughs> but sometimes when you go to different Everyone countries, Everyone knows you what your gotta, lane is. It's important to know what your lane is. Yeah, you gotta you got to know your lane. <laughs> got to know your lane. At least yeah. at least get, to, get, get, get yourself going in that lane and then, you know, yeah. You know, I got a lot of ideas with things I'm doing, but yeah. That's awesome, man. Can you talk about like, how is it? Like, what's the journey of being a music producer? Cause I think a lot of time it gets overshadowed even though you guys are probably the backbone of a single of a record, but mostly the artist kind of gets that recognition. So how's it like being in the industry and what are some artists that you'd like to work with in the future that before it's all said and done, who would you like to work with? Yeah, I just, yeah, I recently posted something about that on, uh, on IG about just like, you know, you know, we're producers, man. They just start with with a blank canvas. You know what I'm saying? And then we give you something to actually work on, you know, to write to. Nobody's going to write to a metronome or just some clicks. Like, you got to have a, a base. So I, I still think that producers don't get as much uh, value credit as they deserve. You know what I'm saying? Because it is what it is. But I'm not here to change that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if I really wanted to go on a campaign to change something like that, you know, I would complain about it. But it is what it is. You know, and I do what I can to make myself relative you know what i'm saying because i'm an artist as well so it's like i, I know I, I can easily and you know infuse myself in, in whatever track that i'm a part of at this point not you have to i think the days for just being in the background and just playing the oh i'm a you know being a producer in the background now nah, the days are kind of over you're not going to be able to make the impact or you know get what you need out of the music if you're not fully fully invested in the ways that you could be you know what i'm saying you got to do a little bit more right you can't be a person that make a beat and then, you know, you know what I'm saying? Cause nowadays they rarely give producers credit. So you, yep. you might want to, you might want to be on the hook or of course, right. you might want to be in the video. You might want to, you know, write, you might want to do a verse. You might want to, you know, see whatever in, in order to, you know, get yourself out there. Cause you can't depend on the artist to do it. Cause a lot of times they don't even feel like they're obligated to do so once they got the beat, <laughs> which is crazy. But you know, like I said, it is what it is. That's some good stuff, man. So what are some things you kind of hit on it earlier? So what are some things coming up that we should kind of keep eye on in regards to the music side? Uh, yeah, yeah. We got some releases. I got some releases coming out uh, here soon. I got some, a lot of music on SoundCloud. You know what I mean? Just go on there on SoundCloud, type in plays, Mo Ager, M-O-E-A-G-E-R. Got a lot of dope records coming out. Working with another artist out here by the name of Stanford. He's from um, Baltimore. Okay. Got a project coming out. Um, I got the, like I said, a Royce record with um, Wordy. And I'm sorry, Blacka, and um, you know the Dim Hills is a um, E40 song with with Wordy. And, uh, okay. Yeah, so just man, just follow me on Instagram, dog, and you know just about it. Instagram, M O E A G E R. Awesome, man. I appreciate that. That's dope. I look forward to hearing about that, and look forward to hearing some of the influence of the Vietnamese sound, and also the sound you can bring to yeah. them. Uh, Cause personally, man, yeah. listening to Vietnamese music that, that puts me to sleep. So you got you got to switch it up over there for them. <laughs> That's what we working on, man. We, you know, I'm trying to get these people to you know yeah. do their own. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. cool, man. Hey, just a um, couple last things before we wrap it up. So, as an NBA rookie uh, with NBA draft around the corner, what is what is some advice you you share with those individuals that's about to be a rookie? It's about to be a rookie. Yeah. Oh. It's hard to tell anybody what to do or not to do, but what I will say is do do the best you can, to, you know, to keep yourself clean. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just just focus on your craft, man. Um, you know, all the partying and drinking and stuff like that that that'll get you caught up. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So it's like, I think, um, I think that's one thing I would just say. Just just try to limit that. You know what I'm saying? Because people are always watching, man. And unlike when I play, <laughs> sound like an old dude. Well, back in my day, but. Back when I played, ago, oh, we, man. but it changes each year, though. So I hear you coming from. Yeah, uh, like, people have cell phones, but nobody was in everybody's business as much as they are now. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, now you got people out here that's they the feds, man. Everybody's trying to like, you know, oh, I just saw John Wall. Like, dang, everybody know where John Wall goes. Like, right, right, right. Social media is is, is is cooking athletes. So it's like, you know what I mean? You got more of a responsibility to, you know, um, keep yourself out of those certain circles, man. Because once you get labeled as a, a partier or, or, you know, one of those guys, that kind of tends to follow you. You, know, you have to play that much better in order to be able to kind of get away from that stigma. You know what I'm saying? So just yeah. keep it clean, man. it be plenty of time to do all that stuff. And if you do it, man, do it on a private, on a more right. private level, man. It's like, right. you, you, if you're a rookie or NBA player, it's nothing for you to go to a par- private party and have. Right. Keep the people you need to be there and you want them to be there. You know what I mean? Women, you know what I'm saying? And, and the ones that, hey, no phones. You know what I'm saying? And have a real genuine good time. So that, that's the advice I would give right now. No, I think that's good advice. Definitely social media and just all the technology has been a blessing and curse. And I, I kind of think about that as like, I would, I think when you played, like you said, it wasn't long ago, but that was before cell phone was really, really big. Where nowadays, man, everyone just busts it out. It's just, it's hard to want to do anything. It's just, um, just any, just one thing can just get you in trouble in the long run. So I got right. you on that. Well, hey, man, that's all I really have for today. I just, uh, I appreciate your time, man. You're, you're someone I watched growing up. Um, I'm a huge yeah, basketball yeah. fan. Really, really admire your, your uh, entrepreneurship in regards to music and the basketball program that you're doing around the world. So it's a blessing yeah. to talk to you, man. Any final words from you? Oh, man, once again, man, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Um, you know, uh, everybody just continue to stay focused, try not to get distracted by all the distractions and do whatever you got to do, man. You know, the most important thing right now in life is to be focused outside of your health and your spirituality or however you see that but uh definitely you know what i mean staying focused is, is to be a top two or three thing good advice yeah. i appreciate it's that man <laughs> i do it yeah it's hard you gotta do it yeah it's hard right now but you know things are things are opening up uh with the pandemic but um you know i think this with anything in life i feel like you know it gives people time to kind of reflect on where they're at and where they want to go so now once things are open up just make it happen <laughs> yeah do what you can yeah carry yourself now though exactly i appreciate it all right mo i appreciate your time appreciate all the nuggets you dropped across everything and uh best luck to you moving forward absolutely man thanks a lot man good luck bro